Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're having a great day so far and welcome to today's video, which is going to be a Will I Buy It? Where we're looking at all of these new and upcoming makeup releases and I'm sharing my thoughts, what I plan to pick up and what I am steering well clear of. So without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so kicking us off with the very next fragrance that's coming straight into my home to live with me. It's this new one from Killian and this is sun-kissed goddess and this is speaking to me. I do love a bit of coconut in my fragrances, especially around spring and summer. Fragrances I like to take on my holidays with me, fragrances I like to wear just throughout the warmer months that are a bit tropical. I start to like things with a bit of coconut, things that are a bit fruitier in the warmer months. So this one immediately spoke to me, immediately tickled my pickle. These notes really speak to me. Berg in the opening, Neroli, Lang Lang, coconut, guac, vanilla in the base. This sounds like a tropical, beachy, perfect for summer fragrance, but it's got some elements in there that still feel like the type of fragrances that I like, that feel a little warm still, that feel a little sexy, you know what I mean? A little different, not your average everything smelling the same type of fragrance, but is typically what we get from Killian. Always get a strong performance from the brand. That is going to be the second fragrance to come home with me. If you're watching my makeup resolutions video, I'm trying to purchase six or less fragrances this year. We're one down, we're one in the red. This will be number two undoubtedly. Next up, let's talk about this new Natasha Denona Hyper Natural Face Palette. This is a controversial one. I don't know if you've noticed, but as soon as we started seeing the leaked images of this palette, all I got when I shared like the original images that we got from this palette, a lot of my responses in my DMs and a lot of what I've seen on Trend Mood and just other people posting about this palette is horror and hatred and despisement. I haven't seen a lot of people, well, to be fair, what I've seen is extremes. I've seen people loving it and being like really excited for it. And I've seen people who literally hate its guts. It's very divisive. And to look at it, I'm surprised by that. I don't know what it is that's repelling people. It's not repelling me. I love the look of this. And it's actually already launched for rewards members. So if you have an account at Natasha Denona, you can already shop this palette. I will link it down below. And it is interesting because when I posted it, I got a lot of interactions with my link, like more than I've had for recent other Natasha Denona releases. So it obviously is one of these things that you either love it or you hate it. And there doesn't seem to be much in between. I actually love it. I think this looks so pretty. And I love that we've got those sculpting powders in there. You can use those on the eyes. I do wish, someone said this yesterday on my community post and I totally agree. I wish the blush shades were different because I'm not a pink blush girl. I wish they were peachy or neutral blushes because that's just more my personal preference. But I'm excited for this. The swatches look good. It looks like something a bit different. It looks very good for travel. I like the look of it. I don't know, I feel like it's an unpopular opinion, but I I really like it. I know that Natasha Nona formulas are always going to be. I think this is gonna be great, so I'll keep you posted. I have ordered it. Who knows how long it will take to arrive ordering from Natasha's website, but I'll let you know how I feel about it when it gets here. Next up, let's talk about something bizarre, and that's these Rode phone cases. What's going on here? What is really going on here? All I see, I here's the thing, in theory, is this a great idea? Almost. Do I think this is actually going to work out well in reality? Definitely not. All I see is this becoming a very sticky, filthy mess. And also, who wants their phone to be constantly rocking about? I feel like if you've got a lip balm, let's use this lipstick stuck to the back of your phone. You put that on a surface, it's just gonna be, that's gonna be immediately irritating me for my entire life. I feel like this will stop it fitting in my back pocket, which is where my phone is most of the time. And I also see that little slot where the lip balm is going, is going to get filthy and sticky and disgusting very 
quickly and honestly I feel like this is solving a problem we don't have I don't have this problem I don't like need my lip balm to be attached to my phone that's nothing that I've ever wished would happen you know I feel like my lip balm if I, I need it really to hand my lips are having a wild time in the winter for example I'll just keep it in my pocket worst case scenario I don't have a pocket nightmare then it would just be in my handbag I don't know that this is solving a problem that befalls many of us but maybe it is maybe a lot of people are walking around with their phone <laughs> I wish a lip balm was attached to this. I don't know, maybe I'm missing out. For me, all I see is, I, I kind of get where we were going, but I don't think it's going to work. And I think it's kind of like, it is obviously gimmicky for sure. But yeah, I don't think this is something that many people are going to do for long. Maybe you'll buy the phone case because you're thinking, wow, what a great idea. And it kind of feels like it is one on the surface. And then a few weeks in, you're gonna be sick of it and wishing you hadn't wasted your money. That's how I feel like this is gonna go. Are you interested in this? Have you always wished your lip balm was stuck to your phone? Let me know in the comment section. I, it could just be me. Most things are, but it's a no from me. Next up, let's talk about these Milk Makeup Jelly Tints. I have a massive issue with these, okay? I'm gonna have to pass on these. Not only are these just not my type of product, you know, they are a stick. I don't like sticks generally. They are also, you know, a stain. I don't like stains typically. And they're also like a, I don't know, even know what you would call this, a jelly blush formula, which literally sounds like my utter worst nightmare. I can't think of, and if I couldn't think of anything worse than like liquid blush or cream blush, which I've been trying to get on board with over the last like three years, Years. I've been trying hard and I'm making some steps forward and now they've come out with a jelly blush this just looks sticky it looks like it's going to pick up my base products underneath I don't know how I'm applying this that isn't annoying but the biggest issue that I have of all is I don't know how it's humanly possible to twist one of these up and not bite it I, every time I see these, the desire I feel, the overwhelming need that I have within me to bite it, I can't be trusted. Even if this was my type of product, which is not really, and the shades aren't really appealing to me, they all look a little berry, which isn't really my flavour, it's the need to bite them. I couldn't be trusted. I feel like the second this gets in my house, I'm just going to be constantly like, I just, I don't think I'll be able to resist. And that's not gonna be good for my health, okay? So that's a pass from me, for my own safety. Next up, let's look at these new blushes and glosses from Patrick Ta. <sighs> be still, my beating heart and gizzards. These look delightful, okay? Initially, the neutral shade, I was all over the neutral shade. That was like the one I thought, yes, yes, yes. The not too much shade, I want it. It's coming home with me. And that was, I was gonna be happy with that one. And then I saw, I can't think who, who it was. Who was it, who was it? Glow by Diamond on Instagram. If you don't follow her, she's amazing. I love her. She did like a try on of these blushes and she nearly had me buying all three. Let me tell me. A pink blush, <laughs> not on my 2024 bingo card, I'll tell you that for free. They all looked so flipping good on her. And then my friend Tanya posted, and again, she's always ridiculously glorious. She's always looking insanely beautiful. But these just looked so divine on Tanya. However, these are not available in the UK. And recently, Patrick's Tar, Patrick's Tars, Patrick Tar. Patrick Tars launches have been taking longer and longer to come here. In theory, we do have a couple of Patrick Tar stockists, namely Colt Beauty, but things have not always been coming here. And sometimes they've been taking literally months to come here. His existing permanent blush shades that have been out for a while are all fully sold out everywhere. We can't even get those, let alone the new ones. So, so I posted on my stories talking about this and expressing my pain and my sorrow that I couldn't just immediately grab these like I wanted to. And let me tell you the glorious tanya if you don't know tanya get to know her it's an order it's not even a recommendation it's a promise that you must you must do it she is an absolute 
angel she was immediately in my dms like charlotte if you want them let me go and get them i'm going to go and get them for you now let me get them and send them to you she is an utter angel and this is not the first time that tanya has helped me out and i know she helps out so many people in the youtube community with equipment and with cameras and with lighting she's helped me out with things like that she is an angel sent from heaven and she deserves all of the good amazing things that could possibly happen to a single person in this earth. So the angel that she is, Tanya is going to be doing my shopping for me and sending me the peachy and the neutral shade. So I have managed to get my mitts on them. They haven't arrived yet, obviously. It'll take a while to get here, but yeah, I had to have those as soon as I saw them. I'm not so excited about the glosses. I'm not really a gloss girl. I've said it once, I'll say it again, and I'm not afraid of it. I don't know why I would be. But yeah, I'm not super excited about those. I have plenty of glosses. I mean, I have plenty of blushes too, but you know. So yeah, the glosses were an easy pass. Nothing there screamed my name, you know, or grabbed me out of the room and forced me against my will to buy it. But the blushes, yes, please. Next up, let's talk about this new Tom Ford Shade and Illuminate Soft Radiance Primer. <laughs> I mean, you know what I'm going to say, don't you? I will definitely be trying this. The Tom Ford Shade and Illuminate, the Tom Ford Shade and Illuminate Foundation is my all-time holy grail has been for years. So give me a primer to match it. I'm going to snap it up. So am I slightly sad that this has SPF in it? I am. I am slightly sad about that. I won't lie to you. I don't know, am I? Am I sad about it? This does feel like the sort of primer that I would wear mostly in the daytime. So actually, I take it back. I take it back. Forget I said that. I'm not sad about it, actually. In hindsight, thinking about it, digesting it. I've changed my mind. I'm, I'm okay with it because any extra SPF for me in the daytime, especially in spring and summer, where I love a glowy, luminous, gleaming, chic, give me all the SPF, it's fine, as long as it doesn't mess with anything, which presumably it's not gonna mess with the Shade and Illuminate Foundation because it's literally there to be, you know, its friend. So yeah, this is a yes from me. It's, I know it's going to be like 500 pounds because the foundation is like the most expensive one I own, but I'm on board with it. I feel like I have really never found a Tom Ford complexion product that I don't love. So <laughs> give me them all, you know, and the packaging. <laughs> sexy next up let's talk about these galon blushes these new terracotta galon blushes <laughs> i feel a little on the fence with these i'm very much a blush girl i'm just not sure any of these shades are really speaking to me tickling my pickle i'm not sure that they are they're all nice ish i have seen a lot of um swatches and like first impressions of these where people are having to do a lot of building up they they seem to be quite light on the pigment which i don't mind with a blush because let me tell you there have been more than one occasion where i've gone too heavy-handed with a blush so i wouldn't mind building up as opposed to blending out i'm fine with that but they're a satin finish apparently i asked the glorious Gigi about these because she had these early doors and I couldn't find any description of the finish on the website. She says they aren't matte, they are more of a satin, they aren't completely flat matte, which I thought they were and they look it, but apparently they have a little bit of satin-ness to them, but it's just not enough for me. If these were all like a sheeny blush, if these were like RMS Chanel, Dior glowing blushes, I would be all over them. But I think I'm gonna pass on these unless I start to see any really convincing reviews. I just think my suspicion is that these are going to be like fine and nice. They're not going to be any better or different to the blushes I already have. And I think they won't be as nice and I won't love them as much as lots that I already do. So I feel like this is a pass for me. I'm just not excited by them. There's no shades there that really speak to me and I'm more of a glowy blush lover. So I'm gonna pass on these if that's okay with you. Next up, let's talk about this Dolce & Gabbana I Dare You 12 Pan Multi Finish Eyes and Cheeks Palette. My number one question is how much of this is going on the cheeks? Because I see maybe one shade on here that is gonna go anywhere near anyone's cheeks. I don't see people walking around with shimmery blue cheeks. 
Do you? I don't know. Tell me what you think. A lot of this doesn't really look like cheeks to me. It just looks like an eyeshadow palette, but fine. Okay. This is £74. And Dolce & Gabbana is one of these brands where I don't trust them yet, okay? I've not really been, I've not dipped a toe into the D&G pool just yet. I'm just like holding back until I see something that makes me believe that this is, you know, in the scheme of designers doing makeup, is this going to be more of a Gucci? You know, I don't know. I'm not sure that I trust them yet and the quality and the, the, the vibes are there. I don't know. Tell me if you've tried anything from them and how you got along with it. So far, nothing has grabbed me. Nothing has made me want to try the brand. I, when I first saw the pictures of this palette, it almost, I hate the packaging. It's just, I feel like I'm being shouted at. Does anyone else feel like, like D and G? Like, I don't need that in the morning. You know, I don't want, I have enough people shouting at me in the mornings, trying to find shoes and cereal and water bottles. I don't need my makeup to be shut. This is just, it feels very violent to me. I don't know about you, but it, it seems like it's furious and I don't know what I did. Also, this giant chain feels very like 90s wrapper. I'm almost expecting like a giant clock to be hanging off of that. Do you know what I'm saying? So I, yeah, a, a lot of the packaging is is putting me off slightly it's i feel attacked by it and then the, the picture of the color story i felt quite intrigued this like had me it was giving me like danessa myrick's vibes the colors and the the looks of these shadows and i got excited and even though this is not my typical color story sure it was something different that I thought could be really gloriously pretty. And then I saw swatches and I got put back off again because the swatches just didn't really live up to what I'm seeing in the pan. And so I was kind of, I was sitting on the fence. I went off of it because of the loud packaging. Then I saw, I looked at the shadows, I got back on the fence and then I saw the swatches and I went straight off over the style and started making my way home because I just thought, I, I just can't do it is what I thought. I still want to see reviews, I want to see looks with this because I don't know, this is... They might have done something, I can't lie to you, they might have achieved something here, I'm just not sure that they have and I don't want to be the guinea pig but I'm keeping an eye on it, I'm keeping an eye on the internet when it comes to this one because it could go either way, it's a wait for review as a minimum. Next, let's talk about these Fenty Demi Glow Light Diffusing Highlighter. Instantly, I hear Demi Glow and my mind goes to Moana. I don't know if that's just me. It, it probably is. Again, it usually is. I have mixed experiences with Fenty highlighters. The, what was the, oh, what's the name of it? Hustle, Hustle, mm, Hustler Baby Duo. Oh, back in the day. That was my go-to favourite highlighter for a while. I hit pan on it. I know. I hit pan on a highlight. Imagine. And I really loved that highlighter. Like the more, I think it was Hustler Baby Me Money, but I don't know which one was which. But the more subtle side I, is the side I hit pan on. I loved it. It was so smooth, glowy, luminous, really, really pretty, softer highlight like I love. And I have really high hopes that these are going to be like that because the diamond you know, those very sparkly ones that they've been releasing more recently, those are not my jam. Those are not for me, okay? So I've been I've been steering clear of Fenty highlighters for a while, but these appear to me to be more along the lines of the more subtle, and I've always wanted singles from them because I never used the other side of those duo split pans. I only liked one of them. So if you give me a full pan of that, I'd be very, very happy. I am excited about these. There's not a huge amount of information about them yet, but they certainly don't look to be along like the kilowatt diamond bomb style of highlighter. And I think more recently, the sort of glowy, softer, luminous highlighters are becoming like more on trend, aren't they? They're becoming more popular. So I think that's what we might be getting here. If it is, sign me up. They always do great offerings when it comes to shades. If these are a softer, more luminous glow, sign me up. I'm always in the market for one of those. And there you have it. Those are all of these new and upcoming makeup releases that I wanted to share my thoughts on with you guys today. Please, as always, let me know your thoughts. 
is there anything here? Do you disagree? Do you really want me to try any of these products for you and save you the hassle? Save your money, honey? Take one for the team? Let me know in the comment section down below what of these products you would love to see me try. What are you most interested in? What are you not interested in? whatsoever please let me know all of your thoughts in the comment section down below thank you so much for joining me today i would love to see you in the next one otherwise take care for now bye 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 bye, bye.